Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jackson here from Titanic Games. Today we're going to continue on with our survival game series and we'll be making some more progress on our inventory. So with that, let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is go into our blueprints folder, go into inventory, objects, and open up our inventory item. All right. Now, if you recall in the previous video, what we did is we set up a data table that will have a bunch of different rows on it that we can draw information from. All right. So let's go find that data table really quick just to see what we're working with. We'll open this up and here it is. Okay, so listed up here on, next to each row of information is the row name, right? So that's the, um, so basically what we're gonna be doing is using this name to get all the information from it except within our individual classes. So how we'll do this is we'll add a new variable. I'm gonna call this row name. I'm gonna change this to type name and we'll hit compile and we'll set its default value in a second here. Uh, so next we'll create a function and we're going to call this function get inventory item info. All right. And now this is how you use data tables. Okay, right here. It's very simple. You only have to ever call one function on it. You just take a name variable and that's our row name here and you say get data table row. So what get data table row does is it looks through a specified data table and tries to uh, find a row uh, specified by the name that you give it, okay? So if we give it the name none, right, it would look through our data table, look for anything with a row name called none, and then return all the information there, all right? That's what this little output uh, struct is, okay? Uh, but obviously we don't have a none, so that would return row not found, okay? But if we change this to empty, for example, then what it would do is it would go through, um, or excuse me, not empty, what did I call it, example. If we change it to example, then it would go through, it would find that row example, and it would return this information for us. Okay, so it would say row found. So that's essentially how it works. Uh, we'll take this data table and select our DT items. Okay. And now since this function is going to be called, you know, get inventory item info, we're just going to return this entire struct. All right, and this struct is our F uh, inventory item struct. Okay. Uh, if I right click and split it, you can see what it's made up of. Okay. And you see there is that item info struct inside of it and you can right click and split that even further and you can kind of break it up into all of its uh, different parts. Uh, but I'm going to hit control Z twice just to redo that. Now off of row found, we are going to add a return node. And from this return node, we're simply going to take our out row, drag it and drop it. And there it is. So it is of type F inventory item, as I said, and we'll rename this to inventory uh, item, okay? Now, if the row isn't found, we'll still do a return node, all right? Uh, but now we might wanna add like a little bit of a debugging string to say, hey, this row wasn't found or, uh, you know, like uh, such and such function didn't work kind of thing. Um, so what we can do is just add like a simple print string. So we'll say print string, Okay, and now for the in string, we're gonna create kind of a custom message. So we're gonna use an append here. And we're basically just gonna take our row name, plug it into the beginning part here. And then for B, uh, do a space and then say not found. Uh, okay, and what this will do is, you know, it'll basically just say this name was not found. Um, and actually what we might wanna do, I'm gonna break that for a second. We're going to move this B down to C, so we'll say space not found. And for A, we're going to say row semicolon space. And there we go. So we'll say row blank not found. Okay, and that will give us a nice little debugging string to say, hey, this row wasn't found. There's an error. Go fix it. Okay. So that's really how you use it. Uh, it's very simple. Um, and we're basically going to repeat this same process for any other information that we want to get from this uh, from this data table. So the last thing that we'll do with this function specifically is we'll take, we'll select it, go over to the details panel, and we'll click this little drop down here, and we're going to choose const and pure. All right. And what this does is const ensures that we're not going to change anything about our class inside of the function, which is true, right? We're only getting information, uh, and then pure makes it not have an execute pin. So if I drag it out into the event graph, you'll say see that uh, this is what it should look like, okay? So we'll go ahead and make this editable just in case we want to. 
uh, and then uh, we'll create a couple other functions here for getting specific information from that data table without having to uh, you know always call this same function okay so we'll create a new one I'm gonna call this get item info alright we can go into this function we can copy everything except the return nodes so control C come in here control V all right uh, but now we are gonna break this struct so I'm gonna right click split it okay we'll drag out we'll do a return node and this time we're gonna plug in our item info so plug that in I'm gonna take this out row part just delete that and there we go then we can duplicate this over here plug it in and that's all we have to do all right so we'll pretty much just repeat that process for uh, for the can stack max and um, yeah we'll repeat that process for the can stack and the max stack amount okay the, these other ones we don't really have to worry about right now so we'll hit control C again create a new function called get can stack all right control V to paste it there it is we will do a return node we'll return can stack I'm just gonna delete out row like so duplicate the return node all right so as you can probably tell this will get a little you know boring the more and more things that you want to uh, create getter functions for uh, but it is pretty helpful to not have to you know get the entire struct like we do here um, if you don't need to okay so creating these individual functions can really help so we'll create one last one that will say get um, and actually with this one I think what we'll do is we'll say actually first okay yeah we'll say get max stack amount so we'll hit control V paste all that again and this time we will do the return node plug in our max stack amount delete that part duplicate it with control W and there we go okay so the one that I was just debating with there uh, was trying to determine if we have room on the stack okay so that's kind of something that we can do here and the way we'll do it is first we need to add a new variable and we're gonna call this amount now what this variable is gonna be is an integer and it's basically going to represent uh, whatever or excuse me it's going to represent how many of this specific item that we have in like a current slot okay so I'm gonna make that uh, public and we're gonna create another function here we're gonna call this has room on stack okay so in this function we're gonna take this same you know little bit of uh, code here copy it control C come in here control V all right but now instead of directly returning something we're gonna do a little operation here so we will still do a return node all right but this time we want to take our max stack amount here and subtract whatever our current amount is here okay and this will let us know how much space we have on you know the current stack all right plug that in and then we have to add the return value off of here so we'll say return and let's actually return negative one okay that's kind of like a um, I don't know like a thing programmers do whatever you know if they're returning like integers that don't succeed kind of thing and let's go back to our max stack and also return negative one right now we're almost done here last thing let's just go through all these and make sure that they're pure and const okay so get item info should be pure const get can stack should be pure const and all of the rest of them should also be pure and const as well okay so the last thing that we'll do for now is add I guess we'll add two more functions we're not going to set them up yet but this first one we'll call on use and then call this one on drop all right and these these will be used in the future all right so I'm gonna delete or close all these just to keep it less cluttered and there we go now I guess one final thing I know I keep saying the last thing that we'll do but the one final thing that we can do is go to our class settings of our object here and we're gonna actually make this an abstract class and the reason for this is because this class is not going to be something that we can ever uh, or that we should ever be able to create uh, like a, a you know an instance of uh, we only want to be able to create 
child classes of this class and then create instances of those. So this one will just be like an abstract parent uh, that we can't really use in the game. So we'll say generate abstract class and there we go. Okay, so we'll close this stuff. Now the very last thing that we'll do in this tutorial for now is we'll go back into this inventory, go into objects, and we're going to right click and create our first child class from this. So we'll create a new one. I'm going to call this BP underscore, uh, let's see, let's call it inven, like I-N-V, item underscore empty. Okay. So this is going to be kind of like an empty class that we have that we'll uh, that we will use at, to um, I guess kind of fill all the empty slots that we have in our inventory. Okay, so we're going to open this up actually. All right, and in here we're going to override all these functions and just get rid of the functionality for them. Okay, so we're going to override uh, get inventory item info. Just delete that. Okay, we're going to override has room on the stack. Delete that. Okay, and basically just override all these and delete everything. Okay. And this just kind of ensures that this is definitely an empty class. None of these functions will ever try to return anything. Okay, it's just, or like they'll never return any useful information. And uh, that's kind of what we want out of this empty class. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and stop it there. And in the next tutorial, we'll pick up with creating an actor component that we can put on our character or really any actors and be able to have kind of this adding items and removing items and swapping items, you know, and all that kind of stuff uh, in, in one component. So uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.